guys, welcome back. So this is sort of the second time I'm filming this video because I was looking at the footage from the first time and I was like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? I seem so serious, like what is up with that? I don't know, I think because I was stressed that the baby was gonna wake up from his nap and I hadn't had enough coffee that day. I don't really know what it was, but we are doing this again. And today I have a video that is a little bit different. I want to talk about the book versus movie for Love, Simon and Simon versus the Homo Sapiens agenda. So this was not on my TBR for March, but kind of last minute we were planning a date night and because of movie times we ended up deciding to go see Love, Simon. And of course, I wanted to read the book before I saw the movie and since we decided a couple days ahead of time, I had time to pick it up and it was pretty sh quick and short, so I read the book. Uh, so today I have Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli that I want to talk to you guys about and I'm going to talk about the movie because we went and saw that. really enjoyed it. It's really fun and cute and super funny and I thought a lot of the acting was really good so we really enjoyed the movie and also I really enjoyed the book. I was honestly a little bit skeptical going in because I don't know if you saw my wrap up for February. I can link it up above but I read The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli and thought it was okay but I wasn't that impressed and I know her books are all super super popular so I wasn't entirely sure going into this one how I was going to feel about it but I actually ended up really liking it. I think I gave it four stars and I like Simon a lot as a character. I thought the book was really cute. I loved his family. Oh my gosh you guys his family in the book and in the movie so so good. Anyway so I was pleasantly surprised. I really enjoyed it and so I thought it would be interesting to make a video comparing the book to to the movie and talk a little bit about similarities and differences and changes they made because I will say this the book and I literally finished the book like a couple hours before going to see the movie so it was like very fresh in my mind um, so there are a lot of differences but I think for the most part they're good ones and ones that really make sense for turning it into a film so if you're expecting to go in and get something that's exactly like the book you're not going to get it but I think if you go in looking for something that kind of has the same spirit of the book and a lot of the same themes and very similar characters I think you're generally going to like it I thought they did a really good job on it I thought it was really fun and cute uh yeah I was impressed and we laughed a lot and enjoyed it. So let's talk about differences. Most of them I thought made a lot of sense. The only one that I had a little bit of mixed feelings about was, oh, and preface this, this is not spoiler free. So, you know, this is for those of you who either don't care about spoilers or have already seen the movie or read the book or whatever. Just putting that out there, not a spoiler free discussion video. The first thing that I thought was kind of interesting is in the book, Leah, one of Simon's best friends, has a crush on Nick, one of their other best friends, right? And obviously it doesn't go well, but that's the way the book goes. In the movie, they make it so that Leah is in love with Simon, which I don't know, I guess it's more dramatic for the movie, but I didn't love that. I thought you know, I, why not keep it the way it is and like have people learn how to deal with unrequited love even when, you know, it's not because somebody's gay? That I didn't love, but that was I think the main thing that they changed that wasn't amazing. The family dynamics in the book and in the movie are so cool and so great. It's just like amazing in a young adult book to see this great tight-knit family that's supportive and really loves each other and you know his family's super quirky and they're definitely not perfect but they love each other a lot and his parents are really great and supportive. I really enjoyed that. One change that they did make in the movie is that he only has one sister instead of two which I think makes sense. I don't know that the older sister necessarily added that much to the plot so I understand why they cut it in the movie he just has one younger sister instead of an older sister. There were definitely some differences in dialogue and there were some things that happened in the book that didn't happen in the movie and vice versa and also some things that were sort of moved around. So for example in the book near the end of it Simon's friends take him to this gay bar and he gets drunk and then he goes home and gets in trouble and gets grounded. Okay in the movie none of that happens. However, early on in the story he does go to a party and get drunk and go home and get grounded. So like that sort of piece of it is the same but the circumstances are really different. The party was never in the book and the things that happen were different. So 
yeah, that was very different. The other thing that they changed, which I thought was interesting, although I think for a movie it really makes sense, is they pretty dramatically changed what it is that prompts Martin to finally release his emails with Blue. So in the book, he has, I think, asked Abby out and been rejected and is feeling upset about it and then sees Simon sitting with his arm around her and assumes like, oh, he actually is into her and he's just like messing with me, so I'm gonna get back at him. So that's what happens. It's like this minor moment that would be internally important to a character and makes sense in a book, but like on screen maybe wouldn't be dramatic enough. And so I understand why they changed this. So in the movie, what happens instead is they're at a high school football game and he very publicly expresses his interest in Abby and asks her to go out with him. And she, of course, turns him down and he's publicly humiliated. And that's what prompts him to release the emails. Obviously, in no circumstance was it an okay thing for him to do, but I think they maybe did it so it was something more dramatic where it's more obvious why he would choose to do that. But I thought it made sense. I thought it was fine. I really liked the dynamics of his friends in the movie. I thought they were all really great together. They had good chemistry and it was cool kind of seeing the dynamics. Mostly I thought that was really well done. There is an added character in the movie that's not in the book because in the movie they sort of do this thing where as he doesn't know who Blue is, he'll have these moments of imagining that maybe Blue could be a different person that he meets in his life and will imagine them typing the emails even though he doesn't know who it is. So there's an added character in the movie that's not in the book who works at Waffle House who he thinks, oh, maybe this could be Blue and you kind of like see that play out. You still get the kind of cute interactions via email email that you get to see in the book. They did definitely sanitize it, I will say, which I'm not necessarily opposed to. I think in the book there's a lot more like sexual innuendo and that sort of stuff. That is completely not in the movie. They like keeps it pretty PG, pretty cute. And then talking about the end of the movie, the other thing that was a little bit different is in the book, Simon sends an email to Blue saying, hey, I really want to meet and I'm going to be at the carnival if you want to meet me, right? It's like a private email. Nobody else knows he's doing it. Well, in the movie, Blue has shut down his email account, so Simon can't email him directly. So instead, he makes this public post on, you know, the gossip website saying, hey, you know, I have feelings for you, I want to meet you, here's where I'm going to be. And so because of that, at the end of the movie, you have like all these people from the school standing around watching him go around on the Ferris wheel, waiting to see if Blue will show up. Um, which, number one, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so awkward. Like, I would not want to be sitting there while like, everybody is staring how awful. But I mean, I guess it was, you know, for the movie, it was like very dramatic. Um, and of course, Blue shows up. Bram and you know they kiss and have this great moment and yeah it's it's cute. I think those are most of the things I want to hit on in terms of differences. I think generally I enjoy both of them. I think they're different properties but they're both great. They kind of have similar vibes and similar spirit and they're good. I think you'll probably enjoy it. I do think it's kind of interesting because I've been seeing some criticism and I don't necessarily agree with it, but like let's talk a little bit about the criticism of the movie because I'm curious to hear what you guys think about it. The first thing that I've heard is some people not being happy with the fact that Simon as character is fairly heteronormative in the way that he appears. He doesn't fit your like typical gay stereotype. He is white, he is relatively masculine, and I guess some people are upset about that, which I don't know. I don't quite get it. <laughs> My husband and I were talking about this and he was saying he thinks that maybe it's because they feel like, you know, there should be representation of people who are more prototypically gay in this kind of blockbuster film, which I guess I understand. My feeling on it is though that you know, like not everybody who is in the LGBT community is obviously that. Like anybody could be queer and you don't necessarily know. It's not like they all have to fit into this like perfect sort of box. So to me, I think that that was a positive thing, but there has been some controversy over it, which I think is interesting. So again, if you have any comments or thoughts on this, let me know in the comments down below. The other thing that I've heard some people complain about is the fact that his family is so supportive of him coming out. Which, again, I don't really understand why it's a problem. Like, why can't there be a happy, fun rom-com that is queer? Like, why do all of the stories have to be, like, terrible and, you know, negative? I mean, you know, there's some, like, bad things that happen in this, but it's not all that. And I think you do also get a picture how 
even today, even in the best of circumstances, you can still get bullying and teasing, even though generally I think people are pretty supportive and it's a pretty lighthearted movie for the most part. So I don't know. I think it's interesting. Those are some criticisms. I thought it was really good. I didn't have any problems with it. I would be curious to hear what you guys think. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts if you've seen it or you plan on seeing it. Um, I thought it was really cute. It was, you know, it was good. As always, if you guys like this video, if you like Love, Simon, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.